it that produces faith hadn't come into play yet. So now they got to teach this Roman jailer how to believe in the true and the living God. Yes, sir. And they did what? They spake unto him the word of the Lord. They preached unto him the gospel. Now what is the gospel? The basic fact that King Jesus the Christ died for your sins. Not those dead gods that you believe in. Him. That King Jesus the Christ was buried. Not those dead gods that you believe in. That Jesus Christ was raised up from the dead. Yes, sir. That's it. That's it. Oh, yes, I know I'm right about it. I know I'm right about it. They preach to him the gospel. Now the instrument that's going to produce the kind of obedient faith to this heathen jailer has come into the play. That's right. That's right. Now notice what happened. And he took the same hour tonight. And he took them not baptizing Sunday. Not when we get 30 or 40 folk. Not Sunday Easter and all of that other garbage. Yes, sir. They took them the same hour of the night. And what did he do? He did what? Watch their strike. Now, if that's not evidence of a penitent man. Oh, man. Yes, sir. You know why, friend? Because this Philippian jailer had beaten the backs of Paul and Silas unjustly. Yes. Paul and Silas were innocent men. Yes, right. And this Philippian jailer had beat their backs for no reason at all. Yes, sir. Now he tries to correct the situation yes. that he was wrong in, neighbor. Yes, he took them the same hour tonight yes, and he washed their backs. And, was yes. and then what? And, and then he was baptized. He was baptized. Read a little bit more. Yes, sir. And when he had threw them into his house, excuse me, brought them into his house. Notice something here. Please pay attention to this. Now here, this Philippian jail. Yes, sir. After he is baptized, right. he takes Paul and Silas. Yes, sir. And took them where? Into his house. Back to prison. Into his house. Back to prison. Into his house. Now remember, a Roman god had to guard that prison with their life. Yes, but I want to tell you something. This man ready to die now. Yes, sir. He got his life right. All right. He got his life right. Yes, he got his life right with the Lord. Yes, sir. And Paul and Silas is his brothers. And he's not going to mistreat them any longer. No, he didn't take them back to prison. He took them into their house. And then what did he do with it? He made a, he made a meal for them. And then he began to rejoice. Believing. Now notice something. The question was asked, what must I do to be saved? Right. And verses 30. Yes. Verse 31, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ right. and all the house. Yes. Verse 34, he was verse number 34. He now he's a believer. Yes, now I want to know what happened in those two intervening verses. Well, in verse 32, the gospel is preached unto him. Verse 33, he repented and he was baptized. That's what happened. And you will never read what that Philippian jailer did, what he was told to do, until you get down to verse number 34 and not verse number 30 and 31, neighbor. Now notice verse 34 again. I'm going to point something out to you that you probably never saw in your life. When he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them and rejoiced. Now I want this word here. What's that word? Believe it. You see that word? Check it out. Check it out. That word believing, that's a perfect passive. All right. Don't have it in English. Got it in Greek, don't they? Yes. What does it mean? Sorry, it means past action that now stands in a completed condition. Yes. That's what it means, Shepard. Right. That's what it means, Shepard. All right. All right. All right it means past action that now stands in a completed condition. Yes, he was told to believe in verse 31. But he didn't become, Luke never wrote about this man becoming a true believer until he repented of his sins yes, and he was baptized. That's, well, that's, all right. well, that's the thrust of a perfect passion. Yes, sir. Let me hurry on. Now, take your time. now when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, I'm in chapter 17 now. <laughs> they came to Thessalonica, what was the synagogue of the Jews. Yes, and Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them. And three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures, yes, opening a legend that Christ must needs have suffered, 
risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. Yes. And some of them believe. There's my significance. Yes, Same church, neighbor. Yes, Same church. Yes, some of them believe and consulted with Paul and Saul of the devout Greeks, the great multitude, and of the chief women out of you. Yes, but the Jews which believe not, Girl. move within them, took unto them certain new fellows of a base of salt. Yeah, the company Come on. Started, started to sit on the up row and assaulted the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the people. Verse number five. Yes, These same Thessalonians, neighbor, according to 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 13 and 14, when Paul wrote the letter back after he had established the Thessalonian church, he said they were called by the gospel of King Jesus the Christ. Yes, same church, same teaching. Yes, sir. All right, now let's drop down to verse number 24 and follow us. Yes, sir. I'll go on and just walk it on down for you. Yes, sir. Sure. Now, when they come to Athens, yes, they see all of these, what, 30,000 unknown gods. All right. The same gospel was preached. When you get to verse number 30, at the time of this ignorant God, wait that I looked over the top of yes, But now he commanded all men everywhere to come to repentance mm -hmm. because he had appointed a day in which he would judge the world in righteousness right. by that man whom he ordained. Where he given assurance even to him that is raised from the dead. Same teaching, yes, same sir. church. That's all right. all right. If you want to go to Acts chapter 18, yes, verses 1 through 8. When Crispus and Gaius, yes. they heard the gospel, believe it, and first baptized, and verse number eight, same church. Man. Yes, sir. Acts 18 and verse 19, mm -hmm. the church at Ephesus, yes, same sir. teaching, yes, sir. same yes, sir. church, friend. All right. All right, now let's go over here to Revelation chapter one. Yes, I'm getting ready to wind it out because this here gives a lot of people problems here. Yes, sir. What about the seven churches in Asia Minor? Yes, sir. I maintain there were seven local congregations. Yes, sir. That's what I maintain. Yes, one sir. church. Yes, sir. Just like there's only one church here. Yes, sir. And the preposition at tells us something about yes, the sir. geographical location. Yes, sir. In tells you about the spiritual location. All right, sir. Like the church of God at Corinth. That's where they got their mail at Corinth. Yes, but they were in Christ Jesus. Yes, Wasn't in Corinth. They only got their mail there. Yes, they weren't sir. doing all that stuff that them, them worldly folk, just like you around here. <laughs> Amen. You get your mail at Lakeland, but you know, you ain't got no business at no red light district and no crack houses and all that stuff. Yes, right. yeah, yeah, that's right. Go and get quiet. Yes, you don't have no business in no club, oh, gambling, yes, shooting pool, and all that stuff. Yes, you meet here at 6th Street. 6th yes. Street tells of the geographical location, but you're in Christ Jesus. Yes, sir. I'll tell you something about your spiritual location. All right. Sorry, brother. Now notice something here. Yes, sir, what does it say there? Yes, sir, in Revelation chapter 1, yes, sir. people say, well, what about the seven churches of Asia Minor? Yes, sir, notice something. I'll show you two things. Yes, in verse number 11, I'm Alpha. Mm -hmm. And what else? And Omega. And Omega. First, first and the last. And what thou seest, what thou seest, do what? Write in a book. Hold it. What thou seest, do what? Write in a book. Write in some books. It. No, it's not. Write in a book, brother. Write in a book, not some books. That's it. Baptist got the Baptist man. Come on. Presbyterian got the confession of faith. Yes, sir. Jehovah's Witness got the washtower. Yes, sir. Mama's got the Quran. Yes, sir. On and on, on and on, you got, you, you go. Yes, All of these religions got yes, their own book. Yes, but neighbor, we don't have but this one book. That's it, and that's the Bible. That's we it. don't follow man-made books just like those congregations there. What thou see it, write in a book. And do what? And send it. And send that one book. Unto the seven churches. Unto the seven churches. Which are in, which are in major. I know there was the same church. Man, because of, oh, Lord, receive instructions out of the Amen. same book. Amen. I know they were the same thing. Right, Drop down to verse number 20. Yes, uh, the mystery of the seven stars. Now, this is going to explain it to you here. Yes, sir. Read it. The mystery of the seven stars, uh -huh. which thou, see, thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. What, 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 what they were? 
seven golden candlesticks. The seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars. Seven stars. Are the angels of the seven churches. Of the seven what? Churches. Local congregations. Seven golden candlesticks. Yes. Neighbor, you didn't have one brass. You didn't have one zinc. On. On. You didn't have one platinum. Yes. You didn't have one silver. All of them was made out of the same identical thing. That's how I know they were the same church. Yes, sir. I know they were the same church. Yes, sir. They were just in different locations. Yes, sir. Right. Just in different locations. All right. Brothers and sisters, friends and neighbors, there is only one church. I can go on further. Yes, but suffice it to say, yes, sir. the evidence is clear. Yes. Yes, it is. We've had an apostasy. Yes. And it has confused people. Yes. First Timothy 4 and verse 1, now the Spirit speaketh unmistakably. It speaketh succinctly. Yes, it speaketh expressly. Yes. That in a lot of times some shall no longer stand with yeah. God's original position. Yeah. Some shall depart, apostasia, some shall depart from the faith. Yes, and that's what has happened. Yes, sir. Right, brother. There's handouts out there. You can get them. And you'll see how all of these particular different religions started, friend. Yes, sir. The Church of Christ was established in the first century. We've already seen that. Right, brother. A.D. 33. Yes, sir. And it was in existence, neighbor, for many, many years before any denomination came along. Yes, sir. The Catholic persuasion in 327 A.D. had their first Nicene Creed. They didn't need the Bible anymore. And they had their first full reformation of their universal bishop, Boniface III, in 606. That was some activity of the Anabaptists. In 624, also Muslims from Arabia. Yes, sir. There was a series of men before the Catholic Church split. The Catholic Church split in 1054 A.D. over the Oregon. That's what they split over. Yes, sir. 670 A.D., Pope Vitalian introduced an organ in the Catholic worship. Yes, sir. They said, don't bring it in here. They kicked it out. It stayed out for 125 years. They brought it back in. It's been in there ever since. <laughs> 1054 AD, the Catholic Church split. That's where the Greek Orthodox come from. Right. Only the Roman Catholic used the organ, not the Greek Orthodox. Well, then there was a series of men began to come out of this Catholic persuasion. Yes, sir. Martin Luther, he saw 96 things that was wrong with the Catholic persuasion. 96 oppositions of thesis he nailed on the door of Wittenberg, Germany. Yes, said, don't go up in the Catholic Church because they're wrong. And instead of him going back to the Bible, in 1511, he started the Lutheran religion. Yeah. And we think it's always been that way. Well, in 1526, there was in the Anglican, and there was a man by the name of John Knox and John Calvin yes. started the Presbyterian religion. Yes. We think it's always been that way. In 1524, there was a man by the name of King Henry VIII. He, mar he was married to Catherine of Aragon. He saw a younger woman named Anne Boleyn, which was his sixth wife. He wanted to marry that woman and divorce his wife, Catherine of Aragon. The Catholic Church would not give him a divorce. He says, well, since I'm a king of a country, I'll write my own self a bill of divorcement. And while he was out there, he started the Episcopalian religion. And we think it's always been that way. You name one from, I can tell you where it started, friend. It was started by men. In 1930, there was a man by the name of W.D. Farrar. W.D. Farrar had a disciple named Elijah Poole from Sandersville, Georgia. They started the black Muslim religion in Detroit, Michigan. Here this man was so filthy, he got all of these young girls pregnant, stole all their money, moved to Chicago, and changed his name to Elijah Muhammad. And we think this man is a prophet. You name one, I can tell you, neighbor. They were all started by men. And I want to tell you something. These doctrines, they are false to the core. Yes, they did not have their origination in the teachings of Scripture. They had their beginnings in the pits of hell. Yes, Every man on the day of judgment, they're going to have to have lived and died faithfully in the only church that God has given man to be a member of in this dispensation. And that's the church of Christ. 
That's the church of Christ. And I'm calling all men tonight to repent. Repent of what? Repent of sin. What is sin? Sin is a going on with a transgression of God's law. Who has sinned? All have sinned and come short of the yes. glory of God. And therefore, that's the reason why I can't read about the Baptists in the Bible. I can't read about the Methodists in the Bible. And then when I read about them out here on these sides, neighbor, it's a violation of God's law yes. for them to exist. And they commit sin when they do. Yes. And I'm begging you in the audience. Yes. Not to worship in these wicked places any longer. Yes. Give them up and join these men that love truth that your soul might be saved at the yes. last great day. Right. You've heard God's word tonight. You can sit right there and believe it with all your heart. You can sit right there and make up in your mind that you're going to turn from everything that is contrary to God's will. Yes. Acts 2 and 38 says repent. Acts 3 and verse 19, you got to repent. Acts 8 and verse 22, you got to repent. Well, Acts 11 and verse 17, you got to repent. Second, uh, Second Peter 3 and verse 9, you got to repent. Matthew 21 and verse 27 and 31, you got to repent. Yes, sir. Repent is to cease the practice of a sinful situation. Right. You repent. And then neighbor, you got to confess faith in Christ. Amen. Acts 8, 37, Mark 8, 38, Philippians 2, 9 through 11, Revelation 3 and verse 5, Romans 10 and verse 10, Matthew 10 and verse 32. And then neighbor, you're going to have to be buried with the Lord in the name of the sacred three. And that's for the forgiveness of sin. And then the Lord will add you to the Lamb's book of life and heaven. Yeah. Baptism, neighbor, it washes all your sins away. According to Acts 22 and verse 16, yes, baptism puts you in the family relationship yes, with King Jesus the Christ. Amen. According to Galatians 3 and verse 27, 26 and 7, baptism puts you in Christ's death. Yes. Romans 6, 3 and verse 4. Amen. That's where that spiritual operation takes place in yes. your mind. According to Colossians 2 and verse 12, a washing in Hebrews 10 and verse 22. Yes. Baptism saved you in 1 Peter 3, 21. It's sanctified in Ephesians 5, 21. Six, it makes you a new creature. Second Corinthians five and verse seventeen. You're born again in John three and verse five. And then the Lord adds you to the church of Christ. Acts two forty one and forty seven. All right. All right. Why won't you do? It?